like the dead of night up here. It's only half past five in the evening. I'm waiting for the two boys. Well, I'm waiting for uh, Mr. Oliver and uh, Nipper. It's Josh's birthday, it's his 40th birthday, so we're going to celebrate and uh, have a few days in Chichester Harbour. We're off to Burden Pool to spring tide, so we uh, think we can get in. We've reserved a spot, but the lock keeper will let us know in the morning if all is well. And we'll sneak in there at the top of the tide and hopefully not run aground and celebrate Josh's 40th. Now, you can hardly call him Nipper, he's 40 years old, so have a bit of respect for the poor man. Hey, Nipper! Hey, hey. hey, Nipper, Nipper, Nipper! Yourself, Mr. Oliver? Oh, for Pete's sake. I'm trying to get us to Chichester so we can have an early night. Nipper's on board, it's his 40th, and he's insisting we sail. So now we drop from eight and a half over ground to seven. what is it? We're doing seven now. Seven now. We're sailing at seven knots. This is what me and Nipper love, is the proper sailing. Well, I like it, except it means it's only... Uh... Can't see anyone. I'm pointing the camera at people, but I can't see anyone. <laughs> You're right up there, Josh. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I want to show Nipper his, dad, his dad's lanyard from the last... Not a lanyard. It's a painter. Not a painter. You can't get the names right, can you? Well, I've really got it started, but I want to show you something. What is that? This is his painter. I don't know what you got. I'm just going to lay it out. Noise. We hear this noise all the time. Goes on all night. It's absolutely unbelievable. It does, it does go on all night. Like we... Once a day. Josh, is... how often do we hear that noise? It all just seems, night. It seems to go on all night, doesn't all it? All night, and it's, it wakes us up at least three times. <laughs> Dave, you need to shut that door. What? There's a door here because oh, you're snoring. No, doors. Look, this this cupboard door oh, no, doubles oh, doubles as a cabin door. No, I don't want that. Well, no. I want it. No, you can't, but you. He always starts with himself. Do you notice that? I don't. That's you the first always time. No, no, start no. with yourself. Last night, down there, yeah. you not even didn't get in a picture. Yeah, it was black. It, it was, was black. black. So, do you want to talk about? what we're doing, where we're we going today. Yeah, I do, but I do want to, first of all, castigate him. Skipper of the boat, we get on there, he makes me a nice cup of tea this morning, and then he says, oh, Dave, he said, I'll have to ask Rachel. What do you mean you'll have to ask Rachel? He said, but I can only find eight tea bags for a, for a whole trip, eight tea bags. Anyway, do you want to talk about where we're going today? Yeah, so it's, it's Nipper's 40th this weekend, and uh, we sailed down actually from Bewley, a good chunk of the way at least under sail last night. Beautiful, fabulous full moon. You could see, just see the plough and get the North Star through the intersection and Orion was lovely on the horizon. We're going to Birdham Pool, Birdham Pool, which is near Chichester Marina. He's not very steady, is he? With Sorry, that you're in the light. I'm coming right here. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, gosh. Nice. Which reminds me, I've got a story to tell you about his head. Just but, talk uh, about Bird and Paul Marina. We're, we're going to Bird and Paul. We've worked out the locking in, but we're a bit concerned because we can't get hold of the lock keeper. And he did say, even though you've booked for a night, I have to move a boat or two, and I'm not sure I can. So that yet remains to be checked. But Bird and Paul's Good. lovely. It's got very strange pontoon, finger pontoon arrangements, which we'll show you if we do get in. But can I just say, more importantly, every day you have to use the heads. I'll not go into graphic detail, but can I just say that my legs don't reach the floor on this boat. And it's, it, it gave real anxiety going to the heads. It's, it, it wasn't right. It felt very wrong and it wasn't, it wasn't a very successful visit. He actually confided in us that he can't evacuate 
unless his feet are touching the ground. But, <laughs> honestly, honestly, it baffles me. I don't know what you that's get, got to do with it. Uh, you get a lot on this channel. Lessons extraordinary, for life. extraordinary. Yeah. Anyway, how did you sleep last night? Like a log. This boat, by the way, folks. This boat um, is actually fabulously dry. So I went on cool runnings a week ago. We've had a lot of rain. I think the most rain ever in November. Uh, my boat was damp. The the cushions were damp. I had to take Jill's special cushions home so they, they kept dry. Come on, his boat, it's as dry as you like. He's got cushions. It, by the way, it's like, a, it's like a John Lewis store in his aft cabin. You've got duvets, pillows, you name it. They're all on display, but they're dry. And we've been trying to work out why this morning. We think it's partly the greenhouse that he's got on deck here. He'll be growing plants in it shortly. But also the fact that there's more substantial dif distance between the GRP of the hull and the various furnishings and that, which we reckon probably also has something to do with it. No, don't grin. That was a compliment. No, 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 no I'm grinning. No. I'm grinning because, Dave. Yeah. We try, we try to keep these to about 20 minutes because otherwise <laughs> people don't want to watch more than that these days. And so short, sweet, short, no, no, sweet is good. People love what short, I sweet say. Is they good, find huh? my insights uh, basically irresistible. Comments, please. Comments, please. And Mr. Oliver's insights irresistible. Yes or no? <laughs> That'd be an interesting study. Yeah, great. Well, there was a complaint by one of the crew members about how he does his morning uh, ablutions in the uh, heads. And that his feet don't touch the floor when he's sitting down on the on the porcelain. And he can't actually go. When That's what there. he says. If he can't lift his knees up, he can't get it out. <laughs> so, uh, so I we need some we birthing bit? stirrups. Is what we need. <laughs> right. So I I recognise the problem. Being a, a man of short stature myself, my feet didn't reach. But if we have a look in here, what we need is something it's about ready-made solution. Yeah, it's a ready-made solution. Um, so we just need like three or four inches of, of something to put our feet on. <laughs> and there's something held in by elastic up there that would be a perfect little step. Oh, first aid box? Yeah. You put that on the floor for Dave and then he can... That's an interesting thought, Josh. Thank you very much for that. As you approach Bird and Paul, there's a starboard marker with a tide gauge. The uh, channel dries to nearly two metres. Well, we had 4.6 metres on the gauge, so in we went. Head straight for the first green post. There are five of them in all. You need to stay very close, keeping them just one boat's width to starboard. Then at the end, bear right and head straight for the lock. There is a waiting pontoon, and the lock only fits one vessel at a time. Now, don't let the green bits on the chart ever put you off. If you do, you'll miss some stunning places, so trust the tide. It's very very predictable just do the tough bits on a rising tide not a falling tide while you're filming D, can we just have words with you about your, the way you um, yeah you set want the boat up. one line two center lines you see a brain in the solar panel degrading it's yeah it's all loose <laughs> is he moaning again yeah again yet again he's, he's moaning, moaning isn't he Moaning me. On the hammerhead. What do you reckon? So I just got a new little bit of kit out of my locker and I thought these boys would be really interested and I showed them and they just didn't even flinch. So they're just... still recovering from the poor seamanship. No, it was this. The... Bird scarers. Apparently they're supposed to work really well along with your owl. And uh, they didn't seem to believe me but if anybody's got any uh, opinion and knows whether they work, could you let us know? To break his hatch with it. Don't you go through my window. <laughs> yeah, I did have one of these bottles break so I'm quite nervous. I'm... Hey, happy birthday Josh. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you guys. 
This is awesome. But we got our new, uh, a nice what are these oil lamp here. Thanks, Dad. We've just been having a bit of a discussion uh, this evening. Yeah, about it's to do with um, this space in here. And um, well, wow, Josh. It's very poor. Come and just explain. I, I don't really want to get involved, but just explain what. So there appears to be a physiological issue with a certain gentleman on board who shall remain nameless, who has an... No, I mean, really? Shh, shh, shh. No, really? Uh, he seems to have an inability to be able to use the toilet in a manner which is effective for both him and everyone on board. Um, and for some reason, the posture of the toilet, or when he's posturing himself on the toilet, he's unable no, to empty his No, it's nothing to do with you me. Need, you need wide... It's you need to open your legs to do wide. With me. It's a normal function of human life. Total So, travesty. have you been able to go to the I toilet? I have able to be able to use the toilet effectively in the two methods that is used for yes, men. Yes, me too. Yeah, yeah two, me too. Two, yeah. two, definitely, yeah. No issues there. My legs were absolutely fine, left suspended in the air. I am a short person, so my feet did dangle. I won't... But it's the width, he needs his legs splayed. Well, it's a, it's a combination. And we've tried putting a first aid kit on the floor so he can elevate his legs, but apparently that doesn't give him the, the width required to spread, uh, be so spread eagled when he's on the toilet. Right. Well, we've got to save yourself. It's right that you two mock this. No, this, we're not mocking, we're trying to understand, we're trying to help. One in three this is situation help. in life. Listen, we're going to ask the boat, hive mind. Boat designers should have this in mind. We're going to ask the hive mind. mind, people, could you please help us? How can we get Mr. Oliver to evacuate effectively because let me take this Josh yeah, yeah. here's his problem he can't open this this isn't wide enough for him to open his legs his legs need to be open much wider than this that is, seems quite it's uncomfortable the there. it's quite wide to me I can't understand no it, it's wide for one leg not the other could, can't even have its locker far enough distanced from the head it's poor just very poor. Swedes for you, that is. That's the Swedes. <laughs> so, sorry to any Swedes. Anyway, high of mind. We, we could do with some support here. Can you help him out? Oh, what have you got to say for yourself, Dave Roberts? Spelt your name wrong for the Jolly Marina staff. No, don't give me that look. You no, know you did. I, I often you say Roberts. Pay them. No, I often say Roberts instead of Rebecca. Yeah. Because I, can't, I get so fed up with spelling the name Rebecca. Yeah. I'm getting quite fed up with getting into this whiskey bottle. Everything about this whiskey is <laughs> taking a long time. <laughs> there, Josh. Oh, oh what's he got? Birthday knife. Birthday Who would buy you a lovely knife like oh, that? Oh, it's lovely. It must have been very expensive. Yeah. Uh, and we're in. Oh, uh, we're off. Mate, nearly. The reason the Welsh don't like you to get into their whiskey is because they'd rather you wouldn't taste it. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? Do not produce a single malt? Well, I don't know. It might be awful. No, it won't be awful. It sounded quite intriguing. I can't believe it. This is like... It's just... <laughs> We're here. Don't worry. So long. Don't worry. We're in now. Oh. Okay. Happy birthday, Josh. And yeah. you've even provided the... Uh, Glasses for your whiskey. It's in a wine glass. Give me that. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Always quick. Before I'm still awake. That's actually really lovely. That is very nice. It's quite that lingers, doesn't yeah. it? It's building with the raisins up your nose or something. It's fudgy in it, is right? It is lovely. Yeah, good call. I've oh, got smacked. Where'd you get it? It's a slight oh, sweetness well. afterwards as well. That is a really, really tasty drink. His lazy we're, um, we're prepping pre-departure breakfast. You know, yeah. What do you mean we? Yeah. Well, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the master of operations. You're I'm an overseer. with a lovely warm jumper on while we're slaving away down here. ching Get on with it. <laughs> slaves. Galley slaves. Yeah. He's got no marmalade anyway, on the boat. No, no let, let, let me talk. No, I want to talk first. No, no I want to talk first. Well, all right, He's got know. this frustrating habit. Josh will back me up on this, won't you, Josh? No that, he puts the kettle on and, by the way, for three cups, which is like quarter full kettle he fills it to the brim and uses all my gas and then when it then when it uh no 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 this is true this is absolutely true 
then it, it screams with its whistle and he leaves it for five minutes sometimes filling the cabin with steam. Isn't that true Josh? That is very true. But do any of us have arthritis? Do we have not? Have we not got great mobile joints? I mean, it does us good. You're, you're it clears saying our that lungs, It's a sauna. But on a much more serious note, this boat has got no marmite, no marmalade. I bring all. The <laughs> you cough into our breakfast. Josh. I bring all the food on board for a lovely trip. No marmalade. No tea well, you bags. You didn't bring all the food, did you? No marmalade. Lovely marina, this, isn't it? Yeah. Two hundred and seventy boats. Quite big. Yeah, 290. 290. Well worth a visit. Very uh, quaint, very rustic. Yeah, coffee shop. Staff are good, weren't they? Yeah. And the what? Really nice. Pubs? The, the Crown and Anchor is the one we went to. Really nice. That's the Del Key. And there's another one called The Lamb. And if you like Indian, there's a place called Thyme <coughs> and Chili, which is also four and a half, five star. Range. Outstanding meal, I thought. Crown and Anchor. Crown and Anchor, where are we? Crown and Anchor at Del, Del Key. Key. I had smoked mussels, haddock, squid in a, what was it, like a creamy sauce. The girl described it as fish pie without potato as a starter. What did you have? We had, uh, Dave and I had the cod and pancetta fish cakes. The pies are stunning. By the main. Oh, the venison the pie with juniper berries, a lovely little gravy on the side. Melt in your mouth. Oh, it's delicious. So it's a good place to eat, lunch or dinner, close by to Delkey. Yeah. If I stand here, you won't see it, though. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Trying to get no, it off. No. Hey, what are you doing? I can't say because Rachel will watch this and I'll be in nothing but trouble. You haven't stained my brand new no, boat I haven't table. I stained it. I think someone put the coffee pot on the table. You put the coffee pot on the table and you didn't use a mat. And has it left a ring? Well, I'm not. Oh, Dave, that's not even. That's a significant. I want this wrapped up still. Yeah, wrap it up. Uh, trying to catch the tide. We're trying to catch. Have you 11 o'clock tide. I honestly, I don't think we're going to do it. We, we still haven't cooked breakfast. What? Kettle no, is back listen, on. The kettle is back on. You are just full of hot air they're, and laziness. They're just Look at you lounging up there. Look. I can't believe it. We've got a tide to catch. It's, the kettle's back on. They boiled it just now and then just left it. So it's got to go back on again. So my gas is being used up. I had to empty half the kettle because it was full again. Getting hungry. Quite hungry, fellas. No, you have a look at. You show them this because you are just full of lazy criticism. Have a look at those mushrooms and tell me those aren't the best mushrooms. You've they seen. are. They are. They have been cooking a long time, but they are good. <laughs> How long will they leave that running? How long will they leave that on? It's like a sauna in there. Kettle, kettle. I love your song. You are a lovely kettle. Can you turn the kettle off, please? He's oblivious. He's oblivious to the kettle. He is. He lets it scream and scream. But don't you think it's a nice sound? Please turn it off. A little kid, all right. 2.7 meters of water, but that's the worst of it, I think. Into the Bewley boys. Back. What is it like? And here we spot Dave Rabetz with the wild Have you spotted sawny he's owl. He's broken his owl's head. Oh. Ooh. It's not 
don't know if you can see them <laughs> far distance the reason they going at great speed down there is he dropped the boat hook in as we were mooring and it's taken us about 20 minutes to get the tender off the back with all the string <laughs> there they go <laughs> beautiful skies for our November 40th birthday never surprise and here they come <laughs> Oh, uh, they've got the boat hook. <laughs> Josh is crouching down like a tribal, <laughs> a tribal warrior about to launch a spear on someone's expecting. <laughs> uh, if only I'd been able to record. We had string. The painter was wrapped round the ladder. They both nearly. What have you both got to say for yourselves? String everywhere. Honestly. This boat is so disorganised, so dangerous, so debilitating, and so disastrously oh full of declination. <laughs>